The 2023 Corvette Z06 has really been hyped and praised in the car world. Well, in this video, I wanna to talk to a longtime Porsche 911 owner who bought his own Z06. He currently owns both a 2016 911 GTS and this 2023 Corvette Z06. But he's thinking he may have to let one of them go. Will he keep the Z06 or the 911? We will discuss. And what is it like to own a Z06 after experiencing Porsche? I am a 911 owner as well, and I am curious, is the Z06 really that good? Does it live up to the hype? Porsche's slogan is, there is no substitute, but can the Z06 substitute the Porsche? We will find out in this video. Who needs to go to an amusement park for a roller coaster ride when you've got one of these? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to another video. I'm Joe and I'm here with Milton. And we're also here with this beautiful new Z06 uh, that Milton just purchased and recently broke in. How do you feel about the Z06? Well, I picked up this car in about approximately April, 2023. And I waited weeks until the Expel application was applied. And, and I hadn't really put any miles on the car. Now I'm just shy of 4,000 miles. I I think the car is great. I took the leap. I'm happy about the the leap. Uh, the worst part of this leap is trying to figure out what, if anything, I'm giving up. If you want to see the first part of this video, please click this description here where Milton just literally just got the car. He is a longtime Porsche owner. How many Porsches have you had? Four. And he currently has a Porsche. It wasn't clear to me whether he was going to keep the Porsche or not. Well, I'm still not clear. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whether or not I'm going <laughs> to, what I'm going to move or not right. move or, or, or move <laughs> out of. No, I enjoy this car very much, but they're different. I don't know. Right, uh, right now, I'd have to say I'd probably hold both cars. Uh, you know, like Joe mentioned, I've had four Porsches. Like most of the Corvette people I've met, they're on their second, third, fourth, fifth Corvette. Well, mm -hmm. I was, I'm certainly still a, a Porsche 911 uh, active fraternity member. But this Corvette is some machine. It really is. They, they really did uh, something here. That's not fake. It's not cosmetic. There is a real soul mm -hmm. underneath this sheet metal. And that soul is competent and exciting. Mm -hmm. Joe and I have spent a lot of time comparing between the 911 and this. And I have to say, and Joe and I spoke about this. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I use the word comparing, you know, we have to be careful. Uh, we have some very critical viewers, I should say, Joe does. Yeah. And just to get in front of the criticism, how can you compare a 2023 Z06 legitimately to a Porsche 911 GTS, which is a 2016 model year? All right, that's not necessarily a fair comparison. Right. I mean, there is a comparison, but it's not a apples to apples comparison for 2023 model year options but there is a legitimate comparison that you could make against what i paid and what this car goes for mm -hmm. versus what else you could get for that same money mm -hmm. that can perform and give you the options and the spectrum of user ability that this car can this corvette z06 gives you a great spectrum and like i heard on some other youtube video and the, the person said hey bring out whatever you want that costs less than three hundred thousand dollars right and compare it against this z06 right and there will be a a challenge and then you you the buyer would have to make up your mind what that additional hundred and fifty thousand dollars is worth to you what does what is the z06 obviously it's the current mid-engine generation of the corvette it's got a 
flat plane crank V8 engine, 5.5 liter that puts out 670 horsepower, which is the most horsepower, horsepower ever from a naturally aspirated V8 engine, period. This car also pumps out 460 foot-pounds of torque, and that torque peak comes at 6,300 RPM. This is a high, high revving engine. So the red line is something like 8,600 8, 8, 8, 8, RPM. This engine sounds amazing. GTS, which makes 430 horsepower out of a, a flat six engine and maybe only like 300 and some yeah, pounds 300 of torque. Yeah, 300 plus, yeah, pounds <laughs> right. of torque. And, it, and, and, and great car. I love yeah. it. I, I still love the Porsche. Right. This, is, this is a little, this is different. But there are similarities, right, in how the engine behaves. Yeah, so, you know, when you're driving, when you're driving this car, this, this Z06, and let's say you're you know, and we're talking about real world stuff here. Right. You're on the highway doing 70, 75, 80 miles an hour, and you have that that person that we all hate sitting there in the left lane, <laughs> just blocking up the traffic <laughs> just because they can. I digress. Anyway, um, you go. You want to go around them. You know, if you're in if you're in the automatic mode in this car, and it really doesn't depend, it doesn't matter what mode you're in. You know, and you give a car a little gas like you would in a regular car to go around. This car isn't gonna perform like you would think. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna jump out there and you know go around the car in an assassin style. Even if you give it the gas and it's an automatic mode, it's probably gonna have to drop down two, three gears in order to give you that oomph that you want. Now it'll do it, it'll do it quick. And I said it doesn't matter what mode it in, but it does matter. If you're in sport mode or race mode, you're gonna get that very quick. But if you're just kind of cooling out in touring mode, the, the transmission's gonna have to drop a few gears or hit it in manual or not hit it in manual, paddle down a few gears in anticipation of that pass and it'll do it, no problem. The key thing is in order to get that oomph that we're talking about, you need to be up in the RPMs a little bit. The sweet mm -hmm. spot, 5,000, 8,000 RPMs. It's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde scenario. Now, we, we find that to be similar with our Porsches, the GTS. Right. Naturally aspirated, things like that. That car uh, likes to be up in the range, up at 5,000. When it That's when it gets very reactive, all right? Those are the similarities. You know, this car has no boost. Right to assist it in getting you that torque right away. But once you get up above 5,000 RPMs, it's at, you are in the dreamscape. I mean, it is, you're, you're, you're in the zone for what all the hype is about. And this car has had a lot of hype. Yes. And Joe should really answer the question because he drove it in every mode today. Yep, right? sure and, did. And, uh, we did some 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 very hairy turns. Yes, we did. And we went through some uh, aggressively th through some country roads and some lefts and rights and stops and and goes. And what did you think? Oh, I about thought the the hype factor. Oh, I think it lives up to the hype. It really is a driver's car. Milton stepped me up. So started out in the most comfortable mode, and it really is a pussy cat. You know. Now, yes, it's it's not. A luxury car in the true sense it's not a Rolls Royce or Bentley or something that has you know really squishy ride it's got a firm ride but it's incredibly comfortable the Magna ride on this car is kind of incredible to keep the car so composed but yet comfortable to cruise on for so we were on the highway and I could see that you could go for a long distance and be super comfortable in touring yeah, mode. Conversation. Yeah, you know, you're not being beat up on the road. It was quiet, we had to top up at the time. This is a convertible, by the way, but we had to top up at that time. When I'm in my Porsche 911, this, my, I have a 2015, um, I find that the tire roar is a little louder at all times in the 911, whereas in touring mode in the Z06, I didn't hear it as much, you know, but that, that may be just my perception. But then as he stepped it up all the way up into sport or track mode, the car is like a beast. I mean, you know, the, just the response of the transmission, it's, it kicks down so quickly. But when you put your foot in it, and I 
I didn't floor the car. Mm -hmm. That's what's so crazy. I just like pressed on the accelerator to get speed. And the way the world rushes to you, it's, it's kind of intimidating, you know, for me the first time. And that's what 670 horsepower does for you. It makes the world blur. And just like my eyes were open, like, you know, in the cartoons, <laughs> you know and what I mean? And it keeps coming. It's, and it doesn't stop. Yeah, it's gangbusters right on through. Because, why? Because the torque band doesn't end until 80, 80 600 RPMs. And, and, and I noticed with Joe, even it's nothing with a different car. Joe and his mental computer, when the car sings at a certain level, he goes up a gear. Right. And I said to him, you don't need to go up that gear. Stay, hang in there for a minute, all right? Get another couple of thousand RPMs and feel how this thing, this car will continue to ignite, all right, and, and go. But your computer is going, all right, that's about enough. Let me click up. You know, <laughs> right. and it's, oh, no, no, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a different universe for some of us now you know there's right. a lot of guys with a lot of money out there that are driving right. these cars ferraris and this that, and the other but or gt3s yeah things mm -hmm. like that yeah mm -hmm. but it's different i remember back in the 80s where you know guys used to keep their car within one or two thousand rpms of red line mm -hmm. just to drive down a 30 mile an hour street <laughs> and you know are they hot dogging yeah they're hot dogging this car it's just as calm as it looks right now, even right. though it looks aggressive. He's sitting still too, but this car can totally be nitroglycerin. Totally. All right, when uh, when you put it in its, you put it through its paces the right way, pedal paddles, RPMs, you've got yourself a, a weapon. And how it handles on curves, you know the nimbleness of the car. And I thought this is a big old car. I thought. But it doesn't feel that way, you know, when you're on the road. It is incredibly nimble. And as Milton mentioned earlier, you could take turns at much higher speeds than you thought was even possible. You didn't think physics would not allow you to take a turn that fast, but this car can do it. So this really has supercar level performance at half the price of some of the Europeans. Oh, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that, and I was one of them to a degree, eh, Corvette, it's not going to. It's not going to compete with my whatever it is that you may have, whether right. you have a, a Porsche this or Porsche that or even a Ferrari this or Ferrari that. I mean, you can go certainly well beyond this car. But from a street standpoint, you know, all these YouTube videos we see with people on airports and tracks, at some point you buy that car, you get home. And like for me, my wife may tell me dinner's going to be ready in an hour and okay, that's enough time for me to go out <laughs> and either have a cool out run, the top down, and relax, this car will do it. And then as I, as I hit a couple of roads or I run across the, mm -hmm. the Kamikaze Honda Accord driver, which, of which there are plenty in this zone that want to race mm -hmm. all the time. And if I want to, you know, sword fight, you know, somebody, no problem. I found this to be an incredible car. And then when Milton drove the car because he's more familiar with it and the roads. I really saw what this car is more capable of. He put the top down at that point and just the 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 handling is like next level. And I would argue that this car is like a supercar now. It's a supercar. And I have to admit I love my 911, but my 911 is down here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a gap now, you know. But but the level of grip around the turns in the Z06, just the theater of that V8 engine and how it cracks and revs and it's so loud, it it's so visceral, you know, how it feels. It, it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I'm so in that's sport right now, so we just went right. up one notch. is quicker, more aggressive, but the car, even in touring, although we're in sport now, the car is so flat, and even over this slightly bumpy, this is not a horrible road, it, it absorbs the bumps so well, even in sport mode, and again, I think that's credit due to the 
uh, Magna ride that this car has. Right, and even with what you just did, you didn't exceed 4,200 RPMs. Right, so I'm still so, in the baby zone. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's go paddle shifters. Okay. Put you in manual. Gotcha. I'm All in right, manual. you're in fifth gear. Let's drop it down to third. Now, see, I have to get adjusted to... You got up to about 6,600 RPMs. And that's not even that close to the red line. Right. And one thing, can I mention this? The, the transmission, the shifts are so quick and so smooth. I think PD Porsche better watch out because this has a Tremec unit in it, dual clutch transmission, correct? Eight speed. Eight speed. I mean, this is pretty phenomenal even when you take over manually the, the the shifts are so quick and so smooth listen to that i noticed in sport mode there's a metallic sound as the revs get higher oh wow the brakes are really strong there's a great metallic whine when the revs start getting out we're only at 5,000 rpm though wow so that was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's right. and, and, and on that on that note, with the turns, like the, the, a lot of the off ramps we took were pretty much almost 360 degree yes. uh, uh, turns at speed, and I gauge those turns at like I know, I know things get hairy and willy. Let's say at 60 plus miles an hour on that particular turn on those turns. I know exactly what it is. So Joe's driving and he's being, it's a new car and I appreciate him being respectful and, and, and not overdoing it. But I'm telling him, I right, take your foot off the brake, take your foot off the brake, take your foot off the brake. And he's, he's coming in at 50 because I know this thing will do 55 miles an hour all day at the off ramp. But the car's width and grip you and the flatness yeah. you can feel. Now, to Porsche, you know, it's credit. Yeah. The Porsche, you know, my my analogy is you could drive over a dime in a Porsche and know whether or not it's heads or tails. Yes. With the Corvette, you may not know whether it's heads or tails. You may not even know you drove over a coin. But the car, when you get it to its limits, and its limits are higher than our Porsche's limits. Right, right. Our Porsche's. Right. For those of you that are ready to start typing some comment all right our Porsches right. all right it is something else and a lot of the buyers for this car uh or or prospective buyers for this car may not own gt3s right you know what i mean they may be they may be looking at the financial portion of it yeah this car ups their their automotive universe at this price point where they don't want to pay the 275 that they have to pay and 300 to get into a, a GT3 today with all of the, the criminal activity that's yes. going on with these dealers and the overpricing. Just getting a Z06 is ridiculous. We market we just, adjustment. Yeah, I have a friend that just agreed to pay 25,000 over sticker for this car. Went to a couple other dealers just to to test the waters of the dealer that he he bought the car from. And one dealer walked them over to a Z06 on the floor. They were asking $100,000 over sticker on the adjusted market value price. And they had the the the, the testicles to sit there and say, uh, and $299 for for uh, the wheel locks. Oh, yeah, oh my God. I mean, it's, it's obnoxious. That's you know, crazy. not only their arrogance is obnoxious, but they're... You know, it's just, you know, the dealer and, and, and you go, why doesn't Chevy do something? I don't know that they can legally. Right. Uh, right. If it was up to me, I'd kill their allocations for 24 months and see how that adjusts their attitudes. Mm -hmm. But um, no, the, the, the car is great. There are a couple of shortcomings mm. that I wish were different. I mean, these vents, this car has a lot of cooling mm -hmm. and plumbing, a lot of vents in the front of the car. Mm -hmm. They're very vulnerable and I stay back from people um, but they're very vulnerable for stones yeah. and things like that. The other uh, point that I, I wish Chevy would do something about, and these fixes probably aren't that great, uh, is uh, the front tires, which are wide and 
lack a mud flap, something, you know, a thin mud flap. You know, giving three quarters of an inch or an inch of mud flap would assist in the stones that are kicked up from the front wheels mm -hmm. that go into the rear air vents, mm -hmm. just forward of the rear wheels. Mm -hmm. Those air, rear air vents, unlike the regular C8, this vent is larger, it's catching pebbles and, and, and stones all the time. Now, we're in the Northeast where we have snow and they put a lot of crap down on the road for the snow. There's a mix, a salt, pebbly, gravelly mix that they put down and a lot of the municipalities don't clean it up very well. Right. So you end up catching these stones. Now I fully wrap the car in, in Clear Expo, which gives me a lot of peace of mind. But there are areas on this car that are very vulnerable to stones. Now, that's not unlike, you know, the Porsche True. forward of the rear wheels, those wide ha rear haunches there. They catch stones uh, and a lot of little chippage stuff, uh, vulnerabilities. But this car definitely uh, does do that. Uh, uh, traveling with it, the frunk and the trunk, it did it for us. The trunk, and the other thing I have to say too with the convertible is the the trunk is not affected by the convertible. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, the trunk is not. I just happened to look at another coupe or T-top or whatever you want to call it version, the non-convertible, and realize that if you take the top off, it fits into the trunk. But yeah. it occupies, it eats the trunk. Yeah, the trunk <laughs> yeah. is done. I mean, right. you might be able to put a little something. I don't know if you want to put something there on top of your painted roof, but something soft maybe but the convertible top up top down you have your trunk plus mm -hmm. you have the frunk mm -hmm. uh and that is that is great air conditioning is great stereo is great but you can't see the engine you can't see the engine now this is a 23 mm -hmm. 24 they've come out with a clear shield that Oh. When you open the flap, when you open the convertible goes through its process and the back opens up right there on my car, you can't see, but they've now made a clear shield. So you still oh. can't see the engine right. from standing outside with it right. closed, right. but you can see the engine once the rear doohickey Hatch. rises right. up. Yeah, rises yeah, yeah. up. But you know what? I, I wanted, that was a, a big thing for me when I was looking at the car. I thought that was very cool with the C8 that you could see the engine, but I haven't lost one wink of sleep about <laughs> right. it at all. Um, right. uh, you can hear that it's there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. it makes yeah. its presence it, it really, known. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they also added a bunch of nannies on the car that the 23s don't have: pedestrian, radar, uh, like the Distronic, at least that's what Mercedes calls it. Um, the cruise control, matching the speed in front of you, and with the car in front of you and matching that speed so that oh yeah you know it slows down automatically and a lot of things like that I, i'm fine with the car not having i'm a little old school i think there's too much technology on some of these cars uh i do wish that this car was a manual transmission mm. if it did have an option of a manual transmission i would have gone for that even though this transmission is great i think i would have done it and i think if it came in a manual transmission it would make my decision as to whether to keep my manual 911 much harder. I might feel better about letting go of my 911 mm -hmm. if this was a manual. Mm -hmm. But I understand the business side of why you know these manufacturers are doing that. But when I go paddles in this, and quite frankly, I go paddles a lot in this car, the paddle shifter is great. Mm -hmm. Joe went through it today. It's mm -hmm. seamless, boom, 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 like a light switch. And keeping the car near on boil or on boil or 5,000 RPMs or 4,000 to 6,000, 6,000 RPMs being boil. The car is just so sweet. It, it hums. It's, it's, it's really a beautiful experience. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I, I wondered whether or not I was going to have any regrets about this car or find any significant or cheesy shortcomings. Don't feel that way at all. Joe and I talked about, you know, mm -hmm. accolades to General Motors. Yeah, that's true. Chevrolet for finally producing something like this. It makes you wonder why the hell they didn't do it. Accolades to Chevrolet or General Motors for terminating the one person <laughs> or the unit 
that was preventing something like this <laughs> from happening, that was standing in the way. Of I, that Who was, was that the guy? Bump on the log. That was the you know the guy that just couldn't let it go. We've 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 lived through. I remember when nine when Porsche 911 went water cooled, mm. and it mm -hmm. was like, you know, a lot of the the, the Porsche files and the, the the hardcore Porsche people were like, oh my God, no, what are they doing? What's Porsche That's doing? True. Yada yada yada. That's true. And when Porsche responded, well, the car will be faster. We don't care. The air conditioning will work much better in <laughs> the heating. We don't care. Porsche 911s, Porsches are oil-cooled automobiles. Mm -hmm. Eventually, those people evaporated their mouths. Although they're they, still a following. Yeah, there's, there's still, still of them out there. Well, and that's know, why those 993 and earlier, or 964 or an earlier, cars are worth so much more money now right is that in that well, right well yeah i mean certainly uh, but i can assure you those people that felt that way right have water cool cars in their garage yes all right, all right, <laughs> exactly. and uh, enjoy air conditioning and do this that and the other i mean <laughs> that's true you know i had a 73 911s and yeah it was great right day it was great and the car didn't overheat so it was fine but you can't argue that having a water cooled engine or being stuck in traffic someplace, relying on that oil cooling, right, uh, gets to be uncomfortable. I have a couple of criticisms of the Z06. Sure. One is I'm six foot three, and I cannot get low enough in this car. It's not that my head is hitting the headliner; it's not. I feel like the seat is too high for me. The other thing is the brakes, although very strong. The pedal travel doesn't seem to be in commensurate with the accelerator pedal. What do I mean by that? If you have this thing in track mode or sport mode and you hit that, that throttle, it's instant response. And that's the beauty of naturally aspirated engines. You get incredibly quick throttle response. But then when I hit the brakes, it feels like I'm just pressing to make something happen. It, it, maybe it's just a little bit too much power assist. Or Don't not get me wrong. Power or maybe, maybe that's it. something. It doesn't have the bite that you, yes. you expect, yes. or the bite you would have from steel brakes. Right. When I got back into my 911, the brake tick up was very quick. You know, and and it could be just what I'm used to. You have carbon ceramic brakes right. on this, and they haul the car down confidently. It's just an interesting kind of different feel. Um, it is different. When I first mm -hmm. thought, and it, and you know, if these brakes are cool, I mean, it's like. It's almost like you're hydroplaning when your brakes are wet. It feels like that. So you have to really take a minute and wait for the car to kind of, you know, brake here, brake there. If you, if you get in the car and go, make sure your brakes are online or mm -hmm. warmed up, I should say. But no, you're, you're absolutely right. It, 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 it doesn't feel like you've dropped anchor all the time uh, or at the level you want. Now, I, I, I must say, I never stood on the brakes hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've applied them pretty much like I would apply any other brakes. Maybe in, in some instances when I'm coming in hot and heavy on a turn, and it slows the car down, but it doesn't feel like it would shut the car down. Right. You know, sometimes. But I haven't done that. Right. I and didn't. Did you do that today? No, I did not do that. Not not, not like that. You yeah. Know? And and it may be just getting used to the feel of how these brakes work. There's a lot more room for modulation maybe you know in, right. in these uh versus what i'm used to in the 911 which it seems like it's shorter you know yes uh, mm -hmm. yeah i've got a buddy yeah that lives down in the virginia area who uh from the minute i got this car and ordered it was how do i get one how do i get one <laughs> and uh i won't use his real name i'll use the name marty uh, I said to Marty, hey, why would you want this car? You don't drive that way. You're just a relaxed, kind of cool guy. Do you keep your foot on the pedal through the off-ramps? So, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to go fast or anything. I said, well, maybe you should get the Stingray or something with the Z51 package. But Marty's the kind of guy that if you told him, eh, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> or if he goes in a dealer and the dealership personnel say, uh, there's a long wait here. 
uh, you're never going to get one of these. Well, now you've just put Marty on a mission. Now he wants it even more. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm not going to get it. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's how Marty is. And, <laughs> and Marty now has a Z06 on order that he's agreed to pay 25000 over sticker for. Ooh. And I, quite frankly, I tried to talk him out of it, but I go, hey, do it. That's what you want to do. Right. Do it. But he's not going to enjoy this car like he thinks he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's just not going to do it. The mm -hmm. car is different. Mm -hmm. And people should know this. This engine likes to rev. Mm -hmm. If you're a cruiser and a cooler, you know, cooler out kind of driver, it's different. But I can't wait to see what he feels after he's out there. Yeah. Yep. I purposely did not get the Z07 package. Oh, okay. It wasn't available when I ordered this car, mm -hmm. but I didn't want it anyway. And why because not? Because the tires, the Cup 2 tires, I want to be able to drive the car in the rain. Now, I've had this car out in the rain, long distance. But driving this car in the rain with, t with rear wheels this wide, mm -hmm. 345s, this car, unlike the 911, you have to exercise a lot more caution mm. with the tie width mm -hmm. being what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, it will get into a hydroplane situation if okay. you push it speed-wise. Uh, this car I have had to throttle back, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. because things start to get a little squirrely. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, like with snow and everything else, width is not your friend. Right, correct. Tires. So, and this comes with the Michelin Michelin 4S tires, whereas the Z06 comes with the Sport Cup 2. That's correct. Which are even more like slicks, not That's exactly. That's right. But more, oh yeah. yeah, without a doubt. I thought one of your concerns before you took delivery of the car is there's not a lot of interior space for a long trip. One advantage of the 911 is it has back seats. You know, you can throw stuff in the back. How you you've been doing this long trips in this car? Right. Right? How has it been? It's still a challenge. My spouse can, you know, put a pocketbook underneath her legs and have her legs out. Mm -hmm. Unlike Joe being tall, I'm short. I'm five foot eight. So, and my wife is shorter than me, so I can put stuff behind her seat. Oh, okay. I, you know, not okay. a bag. Right, right, right. But I find myself having to put my, you know, I put my wallet in my um, glove compartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the other stuff has to go in the trunk. All right, so I have one more negative. Okay. I was oh. in the passenger seat of this car, and there is no place for me to put my left arm, you know, like, because of that big ridge that comes down. Remind with us how tall you are. Six foot three. Okay. <laughs> and I, I was like, what do I do with my left arm, you know, because <laughs> there was no place for it to go. I, I was concerned about that. I, I remember <laughs> when they revealed the car, I was talking to it was a group of us that were looking at the car that GM sent out, and uh, I mentioned that. And I remember one guy there said, "I don't care about who sits in the passenger seat." <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> but uh, it does feel a little bit like you want to amputate your left arm <laughs> yeah. because you've got that high console coming down, and there's a point there where you're not quite sure what to do with your left arm. But interestingly enough. I didn't feel that way when I was sitting there. Oh, okay, okay. So right. you, you're taller. Maybe that's longer it. Longer limbs. It definitely is not the the comfortable position that you would have in a 911. Right, right, Where you right. can do this. Exactly. And you don't have this console, this, this wall. I mean, if that's the worst thing <laughs> in this car, that's saying pretty good things about this car, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, ride comfort. You Ride comfort. Mm -hmm. You talked about a little bit. Mm -hmm. I find the car to be yeah, comfortable on good roads. Mm -hmm. We have uneven and some broken roads here mm -hmm. where, you know, I piss a lot of people off on the road because I'll slow down to 45, 50 miles an hour. I'm not bending a rim right. for these people that are whizzing by me in their SUVs. And I get right. it. I'm the same guy, but I actually will respect somebody that's driving slow for that reason because... You know, why should they damage their car? These right. roads are horrible in some yeah. instances. Yeah. But ride comfort isn't isn't bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound in the car, as we talked about, can be adjusted. Uh, you can adjust so that the engine noise is really, you know, nullified to a degree. But you still have performance. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, there's a lot of ranges of adjustability for a lot of different segments. You know, steering, engine sound, what else? Brake, Brake feel, feel, shift points. And sh okay, yeah, and all that can be customized, and you can save it for your my mode or right. Your mode. my mode, you can you can tweak it out. Right, and then you know. If you had that car that we talked about earlier that you wanted to pass, you can push your Z mode button, which will give you a lot of power and, and blast past that person and then go back into regular mode. Corvette things are turned toward you. Right. Very driver centric. Right. Porsche is a little more flat, but Porsche also puts those things in your face. So you never really feel like I have to do this to see this. Or see right. that. They put the important, you know, critical instruments in front of your face right. so you can see them. Mm -hmm. The square steering wheel doesn't bother me. I've heard some people that bother this. really doesn't bother me at all. The car is very sharp, right. so I never find myself having to do that right. unless I'm parking. Uh, the other big advantage for the square steering wheel is on a lot of these cars today, the, instrument se the instrumentation center has a lot of information up in that corner, up in that corner, mm -hmm. up in the other. That round steering wheel cuts off your ability to see everything. The square steering wheel in the Corvette is shaped in such a way that you can see the entire instrument panel. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go like this to see what temperature it is outside, or over here to see what time it is, or what mode am I, I'm in, and things like that, like I have to do in some other cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so the square, the square wheel, I, I, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. This seems like a long-term keeper because remember in your first video we made about this car, we hadn't driven it yet. You weren't sure what to report about this, but <laughs> but now you've got 4,000 miles into it, obviously. Um, long drives, clearly some spirited drives. So does it look like this car is a keeper for you? I would say it's a, it's a keeper. You know, you ask me that question often. My family asked me that question, which one's leaving, you know, which car's leaving the house. I asked myself the same question, but differently. Which car would I have real internal pain about if it wasn't there anymore? Mm. And, and what's very interesting about your question during these times in July 2023 mm -hmm. is what the automotive universe is going through right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of these things you let go of, you may not get back mm -hmm. or see again mm -hmm. made by manufacturer. I mean, I, I ordered and waited for this car. Mm -hmm. I ordered and waited for my Porsche. And I don't know that I want to give it, give it up. They're different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even though I can drive this car very smoothly and and, and 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 relaxed sometimes i'm in the mood for the for the 911 anyway, whether it be because of the the manual transmission or uh you know the way it feels versus this car this car is you know it's you know my my feeling which is weird and again we're talking about my year car not a new one it's almost like the difference between uh you know, talking about the GTS? Yeah, the GTS. Okay. My GTS. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like the difference between James Bond and John Wick. Right. You know, uh, this being John Wick. Mm -hmm. uh, this car is, it's different. It covers the spectrum, but that spectrum will be closer toward the track experience mm -hmm. where the 911 GTS covers the spectrum. You know, there's great overlap. Yeah. 80% of it is overlap. But the 20% down would be closer to GT, Grand Touring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And a 911. Mm -hmm. um, At least with our 911. Our 911. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our yeah. 2015, I mean, 16 GTS. Exactly. Like, yeah, our yeah, cars yeah. don't have Apple yes. CarPlay. Right. This right. car has Apple CarPlay. Right, right, My right. car, Our cars don't have a convertible top. Right. This has a convertible top. Uh, our and cars not, have great stereos. Right. Great stereo, but uh, and quite frankly, I got to tell you, you know, when I'm in the 911 driving, I don't, I'm not, I'm not missing, you know. Look, if I want Waze and GPS, the car has GPS. I don't ever use the car GPS. Right. I always use my phone. I have my phone sitting there with the Waze on. I'm fine. I'm fine. I could have my Porsche for another 20 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, they can drive me to hospice in that Porsche. <laughs> yeah, right? You know what I mean? Or, or, or take me, you know. <laughs> uh, 
uh, hospice in, uh, in in the Corvette. All right, <laughs> let that be my last ride. Well, even let but may, I'll sit in the passenger seat while the the, the nurse drives me. <laughs> right. right, but uh, they're both great cars. Yeah, and I love I love both of them. Uh, uh, I don't know what the answer is to your question. It's almost ridiculous to have both, but they are different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because the universe has changed with EVs coming in and hybridization and mm -hmm. all this other stuff going on and naturally aspirated engines kind of fading away. Um, yeah. You know, it's tough to let go of these cars. I don't want to let go of my car and then, not that I, I don't think I'd do it, go out and buy somebody else's used car right. that I used to have that you used when to I have. had my own car right. that I ordered, you know, from the factory. So I'm slow to let go. Uh, again, kudos to uh, yeah. to Chevy and Corvette and Porsche. I haven't left. I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> All right. There might right. be a little infidelity going on right now, <laughs> but I'm still coming home at night. All right. Uh, Wait a minute. <laughs> that's a, is that good? <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not. I know, uh, but uh, uh, I uh, I love you, Porsche. <laughs> I really do. I love you, Porsche. And uh, there's I'm, a new hotness around. Yeah. yeah you know, I love you. And uh, uh, Chevy's, you know, it's got my attention. This, you know, this, this Chevy drove by, and you know, how you doing? <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. And on that note, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like and subscribe. Leave comments down below on what you think of the Z06 and what we've discussed. And we'll see you in the next video, y'all. Safe driving, everybody.